Chapter 12 I run, stumbling over roots and branches, my dress catching in brambles. I forget all about the raspberry leaves and run out of the forest past the tobacco fields, into the gates of the fort and burst into my own cottage. My mother stands at the fire, stirring the stew pot. She looks up in alarm. Mum, I just saw one of the fairy folk, a huge one, or an angel, I don't know which. I pant, out of breath. Alice claps her hands. Fairies? she asks. I have told her stories of good fairies, not like the one I saw. My mother sits me down and pours me a cup of water. Tell me exactly what you saw, she says. I describe the large white wings, the feathers on the thing's body and the dark human face. My mother shakes her head. An angel would not have scared you so. It must have been one of the fairy folk. There are those who come from the fairy realm to steal human babies. This one may have come for this child. She touches her belly. I shiver. No, Mum, we can't let it. She goes to my father's toolbox and pulls out iron tongs. She hands the tongs to me. Take this with you in your basket. Those that are fairy cannot abide iron. It will protect you. Once you've gathered the raspberry leaves, go to the sand pit where the men play that game with old horseshoes. Bring one of them back. They are made of iron as well. A moment later, she grips the edge of the table and closes her eyes. Beads of sweat form on her upper lip. I'll go get Jane Wright, I offer. Mum takes a deep breath and relaxes. Not yet, she says. Jane has her own work to do. Then she frowns. I thought the fairy folk lived only in England. There you hear stories of an infant disappearing and nothing but a block of wool left in the cradle, or of changelings, where the human child is stolen and a fairy creature is left in its place. I didn't know there were fairy folk here in the new world. It is good that you were warned. We will be ready. I put the iron tongs into my basket, alongside the knife for cutting the raspberry canes. This time, I walk slowly, past the gates, past the fields, to the edge of the forest, where I find the wild raspberry brambles. I look into the cool darkness of the woods. The birdman is nowhere to be seen. He doesn't want to steal me. He wants my baby sister, I tell myself. I cut the raspberry canes, trying not to prick my fingers with their thorns. I fill my basket and run back to the fort before the birdman can reappear. The raspberry tea sits brewing. Mum lays out clean rags and has me fill a pot with water to boil. When she has to stop her work to simply breathe, I rub the small of her back to help her feel better. Alice, knowing that something is different, keeps out of the way. She talks softly to her ragdoll, saying, Mum doesn't feel good today, so we have to be very quiet. Finally, when my mother has to take to her bed, she says, Go find Jane. Bring Alice with you. I would love to have you stay to help me, but I don't want Alice to be scared, so keep her away. But don't take her outside the fort. Not with that creature out there, I think. I grasp Alice's hand, and together we hurry to Jane Wright's cottage, where Jane is busy sewing. Mum sent me to fetch you, I say. It's her time. Jane puts down her sewing immediately. Knowing your mother, she's waited until the last minute to call me and I'll have to run to get there on time, she says cheerfully. She picks up her bag and heads out the door. With almost everyone in the tobacco fields, the fort is quiet. I pick up a pretty white stone. Alice, let's play a game. We sit down together on some logs near the big cook pot. You have to guess where the stone is, all right? Alice nods as I put my hands behind my back. Then I pull my hands out, closed, and hold them in front of her. Handy dandy, prickly pandy, which hand will you have? I chant. Alice chooses my right hand and I open it. She giggles when she finds the white stone inside. She tries to take it from me, but I shake my head. Let's play again, I say. I hide my hands again, this time switching the stone to my left hand. Handy dandy, prickly pandy, which hand will you have? Alice chooses my right hand again. When the hand is empty, she points and looks like she might be about to cry. Alice, it's a game, I tell her. You'll get the prize sometimes and get the empty hand sometimes. But it's supposed to be fun every time. I chuck her under the chin. She looks at me gravely. Fun every time, she says. We play the game over and over. And Alice manages not to pout when she guesses wrong, though she only laughs when she's right. Finally, she begins to tire. Let's go home now, she says. Not yet, I tell her. We have to give Mum more time to rest. 
The sun is sinking low and we hear the voices of the workers coming back from the fields. Samuel comes into the fort laughing and joking with his friends. But when he sees us, he comes over and whisks Alice into his arms. He's sweaty and dirty, but Alice doesn't mind. She makes her little hands into fists and says to him, Pandy, Pandy, which hand? Samuel contemplates a moment, then points to her left hand. She opens her empty hand and giggles with glee. That's cheating, Alice, I say. Both of your hands are empty. Sounds like some politicians I know, says Samuel. My father comes in through the gates, looking as sweaty and dirty as Samuel. Where's your mother? he asks. Is my son on his way? Yes, Dar, and she is well, I assure him. Jane Wright is with her now. Good, good, my father says, though his eyes still look worried. I don't tell him about the fairy creature who has come to try to steal this new baby. I know he has dark, sad memories of the baby who died after my mother was whipped, and I want him to have only hope for this new child.